the new financial revolution is here. Right now in the world, you have double digit inflation. You've not seen that for decades. You have artificially low interest rates for over a decade. You have price rises you haven't seen since the Second World War. You have the lowest spending power you've ever had since the Second World War. You have gas, fuel and energy shortages like we've not seen for generations. We have taxes almost as high as they were in the 1970s and the 1980s. We have the fiat currency system, which is being debased and devalued by vast quantitative easing. We have the, probably the lowest trust in our governments for decades. This is all going on in the world right now. And we are on the precipice of a revolution. And I'm going to share with you how you can not just survive, but thrive in this new financial revolution. So the first thing, this is vital. I'm just going to now hit you with loads of bits of content. I would take notes. I would stop what you're doing. I would not go anywhere. OK, so tip number one. If you don't make money while you sleep, you will be working until you die. Now, by the way, you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but it helps. And I'll tell you why in a moment. You can be employed and have a side hustle. You can be a contractor or a freelancer and work for multiple companies. You don't have to just quit your job and sack your boss and be an entrepreneur. But if you only earn while you work, what happens when you don't work, when you can't work, when there is no work? So you need to learn how to make money while you sleep. You need to learn how to make money while you rest, while you relax, while you go on holiday. This is absolutely vital. And the best single way to make money while you sleep is to have recurring income from assets that are operational 24-7, 365. So some companies owned by entrepreneurs don't make money when they shut the doors at 5 p.m. So even though that business could be producing income for them, it doesn't make money while they sleep. Whereas if you have a systems business, if you have automation software, software as a service, if you have a personal brand, if you have books and audio books, you make money in 200 countries, 24-7, 365, no downtime, no outage. So here are some examples of how to make money while you sleep. Number one, you need an asset that never sleeps and never needs to sleep. So anything that's digital doesn't need to sleep. An audio book. When I say books, I've written 18 books. And people say, well, Rob, book's not a digital asset. It actually is. Do you know why? Because the information in the book is stored in the cloud. And then it is printed on demand by Amazon or wherever it's sold. Or 10,000 of them are printed on demand. And then when they're sold, 10,000 more are printed on demand. Where did the information from the book come from? Digitally. So a book is actually a digital asset, unless you've written a book and you go and sell them at car boot sales and, and you know, book fairs, which, of course, there's no leverage in that. Audio books leverage books. So the first audio book I recorded was Property Investing Secrets in 2008. The second one, I believe, was Life Leverage. And that was my first non-property book uh, on outsourcing and mobile lifestyle and systems and automation. You can find my books online anywhere, Audible, Amazon, etc. So I remember writing, in fact, I'll use the example of money, my book Money. I remember writing the book Money and that was like a 10 year research project. And writing that book took me more than a year. The original manuscript was 250,000 words, a quarter of a million words. I mean, I know I can talk, I know I've got the world record for it, but 250,000 words. 
My good friend, Shaw Wasman, she's had loads of best-selling books. She writes 30,000 words. So this was a beast. And I finished it and I started selling it and it started to do well. And then people are like, well, why don't you put it on audio? I'm like, well, because it's 250,000 words. It's going to take me a month to read the bloody thing. But then I thought, you know what? Why don't I practice what I preach? Even if it takes me a month to read it, I'll learn from it for 50 years. So people mistake an asset. You have to work hard enough not to have to work hard. You have to set to forget. And I will happily work for free if I know I've got an asset that will earn for me while I sleep. So, books, audiobooks, podcasts, your social media content, your Facebook lives. Facebook's changed its algorithm a bit. And I notice now that I don't get as many on the lives as I used to. And what used to happen was the amount of people on the live would double or triple once the recording had finished, but then that would be it. And then the algorithm changed and the reach was pretty poor. And then what happened is it would get this like, I don't know if you remember at school in chemistry, the magnesium. If you were like a naughty kid at school, you nick the magnesium out of the cupboard and you go and put it in the Bunsen burner. <laughs> and so Facebook Lives three or four years ago would be like that. They go <laughs> really big and then just in two days, no reach. Now, I think they've changed their algorithm again, literally within the last two weeks. Just observing my Facebook Lives. Less at the start, slow burn, but they just keep going and keep going bit by bit by bit, like YouTube. YouTube's the slow and steady one. So I don't really concern myself if my YouTube videos don't go viral straight away because they grow over time. So Facebook Lives are an asset because they grow over time. YouTube videos are an asset because it grows over time. This content I'm delivering here will last 10 years. So this live and these um, recordings in the studio, these will be assets for 10 years, so they potentially make me money while I sleep. Now, when I go live on Facebook, I get in-stream ad revenue. And many of you on my Facebook lives join Rob.team. Write Rob in the comments if you're a member of Rob.team. Just let's have a, a quick check. Just write Rob in the comments if you're a member of Rob.team. So these are all assets. So let me list them again. I'm still on point one. Point one is, if you don't make money while you sleep, you'll be working until you die. And to make money while you sleep, you need assets. And the rule for those assets are they need to produce recurring or passive income. They need to have last a long time. They need to operate 24-7, 365, which means they don't need to be reliant on human beings because human beings don't work 24-7, 365. They need to be online and automated. And once you've ticked those boxes, so they last a long time, they're digital, they're online, they work 24-7, 365, you'll make money while you sleep. Now, by the way, you can also make money while you're awake. So I make money while I'm awake and I make money while I'm asleep. And, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, he's like, um, you know, if you exchange time for money, you're a loser. Never exchange time for money. Well, we all do that. I do that. I'm quite happy to do that. But remember I said at the start, I like time leverage. So if I'm going to exchange my time for money, I want to learn or earn. And if I don't learn or earn, then it's a waste of my time. Why? Because time is life. And people think that time is time. We constructed time, human beings. Time is not real. It's an imagined construct that human beings created. But time actually is life in that if you waste it or consume it, you never get it back. And I bet you when you get to the end of your life, you'll look back and go, well, I wouldn't spend my time doing that, that and that because that was a waste of life. But I definitely do more of that, that and that because that made me feel alive. So when you build assets that produce recurring income, that are 24-7, 365 open for business, that are automated software system and online, Instead of exchanging time for money or wasting time, you can exchange time for life. And instead of trying to make a living, you can actually live a life. Cool. You got me? Great. 
All right, what should we talk about next? Yeah, the three stages of your recurring income. Four stages. Stage one, zero income. So you're dependent. You're, on the, you're dependent on the state. You're dependent on your parents or you're in debt. Stage two is occurring income. You work. Labour. Stage three is recurring income. You've got assets, they're producing income, but you're still working for them. And then stage four is passive income, where you're not working for it anymore. Every single one of the 18 books I wrote from 2008 to 2022 provide me recurring, um, no, they pro provide me passive and recurring income. Don't have to do any more work for them. They're on Amazon, they're on Audible. Don't have to do anything for them. Every 10 years, I'll have to update them. In fact, a couple of them I won't even have to update every 10 years. I might only have to update every 30 years or 40 years. So you want to go from zero income to occurring income to recurring income to passive income. Great. Let me know how you're getting on in the comments. Just tell me how you're doing. Okay, next then are the different types of income. Now, let me just refer back to this financial revolution that's happening. It's very possible that the fiat system will be replaced in the next few decades. It's very possible that cash will not be a thing in the next few decades. In the next century, it's guaranteed that fiat currency will be replaced and cash will be replaced. How can I tell that? Looking back through the past. So in my book, Money, I did a, a brief history of money going back thousands of years. And people think that cash is money or fiat currency is money. It's not. It's a form of money. But money changes form. So do you know we used to use salt as money hundreds of years ago? Do you know where the word salary derives? The word salary derives from salt. Because money used to be exchanged and you used to get paid in salt. In prisons, sardines or cigarettes have been a form of Currency. In some cultures going back, stones, even stones in the sea, were used as money. So it's guaranteed that over a long enough period of time, fiat currency as we know it, extinct, a new form of more efficient, effective, decentralised, um, unmanipulatable money will evolve. Because as money evolves, a stronger form of money always replaces a weaker form of money. Although sometimes a more beneficial to the people in power form of money evolves. So when we went off the gold standard, in some ways, fiat currency and the liquidity and the ability to print it was a more efficient form of money than gold. Gold's heavy, you've got to store it, you've got to insure it. Oh, wait a minute, I only want, um, I only want a slice of ham. I've got a bar of gold, how do we do this? So in a lot of ways, cash... It's quicker, it's easier, it's more liquid, there's less friction. But in other ways, it is a bit more of a scam, really, because the government can print it at ease, the government can debase it and reduce its value, and it's not worth anything. So what will disrupt the current form of fiat currency? Could be cryptocurrency. Why? More decentralised if it's Bitcoin, a harder version of money, less manipulatable, i.e., can't print more Bitcoin, can't um, increase inflation on Bitcoin through monetary policy. So the money revolution is happening right now. It's speeding up and cash could be gone in 10, 20, 30 years, you know, because maybe governments want to be able to track your um, spending behavior more to use your data against you to control, you know, fiscal monetary policy. Or maybe they don't want to pull in all this drug money. Um, yeah, so sometimes we've got a more effective, more efficient form of money and sometimes we've got government intervention. But money is changing form. Don't resist it, embrace it. OK, so now what I'm going to do is share with you seven different types of income. Are you ready? Oh, just as a quick um, another reminder, because I like to see. Um, write Rob if you're a member of Rob.team. Right, sorry, 
if you're not a member of Rob.team. Right, Rob, if you're a member, and sorry if you're not. Just like to see who the Rob.team members are. Remember, Rob.team members can get recordings of all my Zoom masterclasses, my masterminds, the recurring income summit. You, Rob.team members are the only people who can do Ask Me Anything Lives with me and Q&As. We've got live um, events coming up in the next couple of weeks. It's all on Rob.team. Okay, right. The seven different types of income. So the first type of income is earned income. Earned income is labour. It's work. Now, earned income is the least leveraged. So you know I said I like time leverage. I'm recording here. Hello, hello, hello. So this could go on the podcast. I mean, for example, we've got Joe behind the camera there. Joe could think this would make quite a good money episode and Joe could edit this up and put it on the money podcast. So even though I am talking and this is labour, it's work, because I've got the audio asset, and the recording asset, and the live asset, this is now not just labour, it is a system. It is time leveraged, it is automation, it is scale, it is distribution. Okay, now, look, a lot of people who teach entrepreneurship and business, they look down there and, oh, you work. Oh, you're employed. Not me, not me, I was employed once. And while I'm not technically employed anymore, I'll work for the worst fucking boss in the world. Me! <laughs> I know us, so, you know, we're all, we're all accountable to someone. I'm accountable to my podcast guests. I'm accountable to my um, board members. I'm accountable to my team. I'm accountable to my wife. We're all accountable to someone. Okay, the next type of income is interest income. So interest is earning on capital. So the great thing about capital, which is your money in the form of cash or um, a lump. (laughs) Look at Rob, the financial guru, using technical terms. Capital is a lump of money. Mark calls it a wall of money. Mark loves capital. My business partner, Mark. Not much gets Mark excited. Capital does. Not much gets Mark aroused. Ask his wife. Capital gets Mark aroused. And Mark calls it a wall of capital. I want a wall of capital, a lump of capital. So capital at the moment is cash money. It's an asset in the form of cash. Now, capital produces interest because it can be loaned out um, and it has earning potential. So whilst you don't need capital or cash to make money, cash or capital does make money. But what's the problem right now? Let me know in the comments. What's the problem with capital right now? What's the problem with interest right now? Hopefully you could configure this out. I'm gonna give you 10, 15 seconds to think about the answer. What's the problem with capital and interest right now? I'm not here to just do it all as, you know, unicorns and rainbows and rose tinted glasses. I'm here to tell you the reality. It's very important to understand the reality. I ain't here to sell it, I'm just here to tell it. So the problem with capital right now is inflation is killing it. I had a bank account with three to four million pounds in it. Still probably got three to four million pounds in it. Kind of need the liquidity in that bank account. But it cost me three to four hundred thousand pounds to have three to four million pounds in the bank for a year with inflation at 10%. And by the way, Inflation's more than 10%. Let's be freaking honest about that. So one of the challenges of capital right now is inflation eroding it. And what's one of the challenges of interest? The challenge of interest is interest rates are very low. Now, you can drive your own interest. Like, I could lend you money at 1% a month. And if you can um, get a return on borrowing at 12% a year, you might take it. But I'd have to charge you 1% a month to beat inflation of 10% a year and make a net 2% return. So interest is great when interest rates are high. Capital is great when inflation is low. Earned income is great if you are Conor McGregor or Tiger Woods or Lewis Hamilton because they earn tens of millions in salary. But most people are earning 
less than their spending. So each one of these different um, types of income have upsides and downsides. Because remember, I'm not here just to, you know, rose tinted glasses, everything's amazing, it's so easy to make money. Oh yeah, you just gotta be open-minded and you just gotta do the law of attraction, man. No, you need both. You need the upside and the downside. So you have earned income and if you can earn big, that's great. You have interest income, which is fine if you can get an interest rate over and above inflation. Then you have profit income. Now, profit income, there's no limit on this. You could run a company and you could make 100 grand a year, or you could make 100 million a year, or you could make 10 billion a year. So actually, profit income is one of my most favorite because it's not as affected by inflation. If I need to make more profits, I just put the prices up. It's not so much affected by interest. So profit income is sexy. Because you can build a company and if you can make good sales and keep your overheads fairly lean, you can make large lumps of money. Now, you can make profit by buying and selling. My preferred way to make profit is by trading. So what's the problem with buying and selling? Let's have a look in the comments. Let's see if you're all with me and awake and engaged. What's the problem with buying and selling? Okay, number one, what if you buy badly? Number two, what if there's no seller? Number three, what if the market shifts between buy and sell? Number four, have you worked out all the taxes? Number five, have you worked out all the buying costs? Number six, when you sell it, someone else earns on it. Do you know I had a, um, well, I had various watches and I've still got many, but I'll give you one example. I had a Richard Meal RM11 in gold. I paid, let's say 70 for it, 70,000. Sold it at pretty much 80,000. Not bad, you know, what? 13, 14% 13, 14% return on a watch, pretty rare. At that time, Richard Mills weren't known for appreciating. Sold it for, let's say, 80 grand, give or take. They are now worth 250,000 pounds. It has cost me 180,000 pounds selling the watch. I went around 23 flats that I developed and sold, let's say, 10 years ago. And whilst I made good money, I made seven figures on that whole deal, They've doubled. So if I sold them for 200, now they're now 400. 400 grand times 23? Yeah, there you go. So the problem with selling is once you've sold, you made your money, you've got to pay your tax and all your buying and selling costs. But then for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you can't earn. Now I've been recording this TV show. I can't tell you what it's about, but they've all been interested in all of my developments because I've got 1,550 tenants across hundreds of properties. And they're all surprised. Well, why don't you sell? Take the money. You know, you haven't made the profit until you sell. Yeah, I want income. So I want profit in the form of income. I would take one tenth of the income every year, the 100% of the profit now. Now, most people are, oh yeah, but Rob, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I don't know if that's a saying outside of England. And I don't know if anyone under 60 knows what that is. My mum used to say that to me. I didn't know what it meant. But, you know, sometimes money today is better than maybe money tomorrow. I get that. But here's the thing. As long as I own the asset, I can, I'm assured that I can get it. But I'd rather have 10% of the money now because I'm not going to pay the tax up front. And then the asset's going to go up in value and then the income's going to go up in value. So profits are the third of seven types of um, income. By the way, I hope you're finding this useful so far. Just give me a yes in the comments if you're finding my little presentation useful. Welcome to the Recurring Income Summit. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you've got a cheeky voyeuristic peek into our studio because we're actually live on the Recurring Income Summit in our studio here. So we've got Joe there and we've got Harry who are running the event. So this is our studio that we built um, when COVID... (coughs) Can I still say that word? Well, I get shadow banned on social media by saying the C word. So when it all kicked off, we built a studio here. This used to just be one of our offices. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, right. The next type of income is royalty income. I love royalty income. Now, the problem with me is I can't sing. So I can't make royalties on songs. I'm not Michael Jackson. But Michael, do you know um, a little story? Because I know Michael Jackson's bodyguard. Um, I think Michael Jackson was a fan of Eminem. I think Eminem ghosted and shamed Michael Jackson. So instead of causing a scene or saying or doing anything publicly, Michael Jackson just went and bought Eminem's entire back catalogue and owned all his music. He bought the Beatles back catalogue. 
and Michael Jackson was making, I, I understand, hundreds of millions of pounds on royalty income of other people's songs. So a song is an asset and the royalties are obviously the ongoing residual earnings every time that song gets played. I love royalty income. Why? Because the asset was created years ago. I don't know if any of you like Christmas number ones, but there's a band called Slade. You might have heard of them. You might be singing their Christmas song in your head. And because in 1973, I think it was, or early 1970s, they made this Christmas number one. They make half a million pounds every Christmas from the royalty income from the Christmas number one. So in my head, I'm like, how can I do what singers do, what artists do without singing? So if I make an audio book, I get royalty income on an ongoing basis from that audio book. If I have a podcast and I have sponsors and advertisers, I'm essentially earning royalty on the podcast. If I do lives on Facebook and there's the in-stream ads, essentially it's a royalty for my content. So, all right, I can't sing and I definitely can't and I won't ruin the experience for you by trying, but my content, my information, my speech here is my equivalent of Michael Jackson's songs. It's my intellectual property. It's my asset. And by the way, a lot of people, they downvalue their asset. They don't realise they are their best asset. You are your best asset. Invest in yourself wisely because you pay yourself the best interest. Now, let's say you're listening here thinking, well, Rob's got nearly 2 million followers on social media. Rob's written 18 books. Rob's been an entrepreneur for 16 years. Rob's got hundreds of properties. Yada, 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 yada. I haven't got any of that. Well, I didn't when I started. And every winner was once a beginner. And every master was once a disaster. And it reminds me of the story of Picasso, which I wrote. I think I wrote, wrote it in my book, Start Now, Get Perfect Later. So, or maybe I'm worth more. Most artists make money when they're dead, not when they're alive. Picasso was not one of those artists. He made a lot of money while he was alive. And he was a big star. And he was sat in a cafe in France, minding his own business with his espresso. And his croque monsieur. I added that bit in. He might not have been eating a croque monsieur. <laughs> and he didn't talk like I'm talking. <laughs> anyway, someone came up to him and said, you're Picasso, the famous Picasso. <gasps> and pulled out a napkin and said, draw me a picture. So he took a pencil and drew a picture, you know, Picasso style. Woo! Gave it to her. Pause, looked at her. It was a bit awkward. She looked at him, he looked at her, she looked at him, he looked at her. <gasps> that awkward pregnant pause. And then she sort of bubbled, uh, how much? And he said, 5,000 francs. And she went, 5,000 francs? That took you five minutes. He went, no, 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 no. That took me my whole life. So here's the thing I'm here to tell you. What you know has value. What you've done has value. Where you've been has value. Who you are has value. And you can turn what you already know into cash flow. You can turn your information into income, your inspiration into income, your content into cash flow, your rants into revenue, your mouth into money. And by the way, that's what I do. That's what I do and make many millions of pounds from information, intellectual property, and that is royalty income. All right, the fifth of seven types of income is rental income. Now, by the way, most people, when they think rental income, what do you think when you think rental income? What's the big one? Of course, it's real estate and property, and I have 1,550 tenants who all pay me rental income. Now, I've got to pay off my... Um, mortgage lenders and my financiers, and I've got to pay maintenance and management, although I own the management company, so I'm sort of paying myself twice there. And there's some, some other expenses, but I'm left with a net margin. So my net rental income is in the millions of pounds a year. And it, and it is, that's a fact, not a brag. But do you know you can earn rental income from your spare room via Airbnb? Do you know people rent out their clothes? They rent out watches, they rent out supercars. So you can rent, and some people rent themselves out. I'm from Peterborough, apparently it's quite a big thing here to rent oneself out. 
but that's for another podcast. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that you can rent out, so don't have your mind limited. It is not about a lack of resources. It's about a lack of resourcefulness. I think it was Tony Robbins that said that, and I really agree with that. And by the way, sometimes when you're low on money, and you're low on followers, and you're low on luck, what's the upside? You've got the hunger. You've got the hustle. Do you know a lot of boxers and UFC fighters, you know when they make millions? They often don't stay at the top. They often get knocked out. Why? Because the hunger's gone. So if you are not doing that well, or you're just starting out, or you've had some bad luck, that's hunger. You've got to turn that hunger into action and into resourcefulness. So there's a lot of things that you can get rental income from. The sixth type of income is dividend income. So you get dividends from stocks that you own and you get dividends from companies that you own. So you either own your own company and you can take your own dividends or drawings or you own a little share in a big company and when they take dividends, you get your share. So companies are assets, whether you buy into a company on the stock market or whether you build your own company. And then the final type of asset of, of income is capital, like I've said before. So um, capital is asset. It's lump of money. It's wall of money. Capital attracts interest, although at the moment inflation is hurting it. So you've got to protect it. This is why I've been saying cash is trash. This is why I've been saying you've got to get money out of your bank and you've got to put it into an asset. It is vital right now that you protect your cash from inflation and you get it into an asset. And do you know right now earning 10% is 0% because that's what inflation is. So best assets might be real estate, digital assets like building a company online or your content on social media or starting a podcast or a YouTube channel or a TikTok account and earning creator revenue. But you must protect your capital from erosion and inflation. All right, I've got loads to cover. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Give me a yes if you're enjoying this in the comments. Okay, so if you want to make faster, easier and cheaper income, capital, interest, royalty, dividend, all the types of money that I've just shared with you. Let me say that again. Faster, easier and cheaper. Few little rules for you. Number one, build a digital asset, not a physical one. A physical one would be real estate. Nothing wrong with that, except you've got um, plant machinery. You've got ground rent, service charge, depreciation of material. You've got lots of cost and responsibility. You've got planning. You've got tenants. You've got boilers. You've got insurances. You've got bad debt. You've got voids. If you have a web page and you get traffic to it, your only cost is your hosting and the buying of the domain name. If you're creative, you can get most domain names for under $100. And then if you just use a bit of social media and drive some traffic to it, you build traffic and you can run advertisements on it or you could do lead generation on it. So a web page is a digital asset. Real estate is a physical asset. A company with staff and stock is a physical asset. But a podcast and a YouTube channel with sponsors and advertisers and subscribers is a digital asset. So faster, easier and cheaper money comes from number one, digital assets. Number two, leveraging information. So I wrote a book on money and I earn money on the information of money. I have a podcast called Disruptors and I earn sponsorship and advertisement money and other money interviewing disruptors. I'm interviewing Paul Gascoigne tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this. Might be live. Um, I've got a couple of big guests, but just got to dot the I's and cross the T's, so I'm not going to say their names. I interviewed Caitlyn Jenner recently. Um, Matt Hancock, who's a um, famous politician in the UK. Floyd Mayweather, not once but twice. So I leverage the internet, I leverage information, so there are a couple of rules if you want quicker, easier and cheaper assets. Make them digital, make them scalable. So in theory, 
in this studio, I can reach the entire planet. Now, this video might get a million views, but this video might get 10,000 views. It just depends on what the algorithm does. This live stream could have 150 people on or 1.5 million people on, depending on, you know, how good we are at marketing our event or how well this event is known. It's called the Recurring Income Summit, by the way. But the point is, I could potentially reach over 200 countries and more than a million people stood in my home city in a little room. So that's leverage, that's distribution, that's reach into revenue and impact into income. So here's the thing. If you'd like to turn your idea into income, your content into cash flow, if you'd like to start or scale a business, get better financial education and knowledge, build multiple streams of recurring income, you need to join Rob.team right now. So Rob.team, are you getting ready with the link, Harry? Don't type it in yet. Harry's getting ready with the link. T minus 30 seconds. Rob.team is my disruptive, decentralized, free speech platform where you can learn, earn, and invest to create multiple streams of recurring income. Digitally, online, side hustle, part-time, full-time, big-time, you choose. So open up a new page if you're watching the live and type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. Harry, if you hyperlink it and put it in the chat right now on the Recurring Income Summit. So if you're watching the live, open a new page. Do it now, though, because tomorrow never comes. Do it now. Type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. Harry has just put the link in the comments. Now, I've only got a couple of minutes left, so you've got to go and do it now. I'll give you 30 seconds to do it, and then I'll carry on with my content. Either click the link that's hyperlinked or open a new page and type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. Here's why. You have got three years worth of vaulted content on start and scale up business, on being an entrepreneur, on building multiple streams of recurring income and digital income and passive income. Things like my 21 ways to monetize social media masterclass, my content creation masterclass, my how to automate your sales and marketing masterclass, my seven fastest ways to 100K, whether it's your first 100K or your next 100K, masterclass. These are all deep dive courses that have been recorded that are in Rob.team for you to immediately consume. And get this, it's not 100 a month, it's not 1,000 a month, it's not even 50 a month, it's not 49 a month, it's not 29 a month, it's not even nine a month. It costs you less than a large coffee and it costs you one third of what you subscribe to Netflix already. When you watch Netflix, you watch crime and murder. You pay to get scared. When you join Rob.team, you learn to earn. You learn, earn, and invest. You appreciate your income, your education, your inspiration, and you turn occurring into recurring income and active into passive income. So go and join right now. The link is R-O-B dot T-E-A-M. I know a load of you wrote Rob in the comments on Rob.team, all of you that are already members. Hope you're logging in. Now, by the way, let's say you're like, yeah, this Rob guy's a bit gobby. He's got an awful fashion sense. I'm not sure about him. Here's what you can do to game me. Go and open a new page and type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M right now. Because there's no contract, you can cancel at any time. Go back and consume all the content. And then if you feel like it afterwards, cancel it. That's like going into a restaurant and eating all the food and then saying, nah, just give you a five pound tip. Not paying for any of it. Bye. Why not? I don't mind. Don't make any difference to me. Look, you know what? I made my millions in my 20s and 30s. I'm now 43. So it's not, by the way, I'm not one of these guys that says, oh, don't do it for the money. Do it for free then. I, I, you know, I like money. Don't get me wrong. I love money. And you should love money too. But at less than a large cost of coffee, I'm clearly not doing it for the money. Now, I think when you get in and get, see the community of over 5,000 disruptive entrepreneurs, and you know, when you see the content and the Ask Me Anything lives that you get that you can't get anywhere else, and all the masterclasses and the Zooms and the live meetups, I think you might stay, but that's your choice. So it's R-O-B dot T-E-A-M, and here's the thing, you cannot get any recordings of any of my courses anywhere unless you're a Rob.team member. So I don't know if you're busy. Give me a yes in the comments if you're busy. 
Give me a yes in the comments if you sometimes register for courses and events and Zooms and you really intend to do it. And then some disaster happens. The kids, the dog, the wife, the husband, life, COVID. Ah, your boss. And you really wanted to attend it and you just couldn't make it. Well, if you are anything to do with my company, you miss an event. That's it. There are no second chances. It doesn't work like that. Because life doesn't just keep going, oh, don't worry if you miss. Just have a go, have a go tomorrow. Don't worry. Have another. It's not like that. But as a Rob.team member, you can get virtually all the recordings. There's occasional lives we can't record. But you can get a recording of the two-day recurring income summit. <clears throat> so if you're watching live and you thought, you know what? This content's pretty solid. Um, imagine if you had two days of this. Then if you just go and open a new window and type in R-O-B dot T-E-A-M, you can get the record recurring income summit two-day live masterclass as a member of Rob.team. And we are, um, I've got various different masterclasses coming up. Um, I've managed to hack virality. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an OnlyFans. I wasn't on TV. I didn't get naked. And if I could do any of those and get millions of followers and go viral, I probably freaking would. Honestly, why not? Um, but I'm not any of those. So I had to graft and work and figure out algorithms and test and tweak and hack to get my nearly 2 million followers and my many millions of views. Do you know I had 28 million downloads and views of my Disruptor show in June? 28 million downloads in June. Like from little old Rob who kept his clothes on, who wasn't on Love Island. So if I can hack growth, I can teach you how to do it. Would you like to learn from me? Well, if you would, I'm doing a How to Hack Viral Growth Masterclass. Let's say you want to turn your information into income and your content into cash flow, but you're like, oh, I don't want to speak to people. I'm not very confident. I haven't been doing this for very long. I'm an introvert. I've got a face for radio. You know, all that sort of stuff. I don't know what to say. I'm, like, I was that guy too. I really was, by the way. Um, I did a content creation masterclass, a content leverage masterclass, and I do loads of content on helping you come up with your idea uh, and keep coming up with content. I just keep my little Word document here and I just chuck my ideas in. I, I could literally do 100 pieces of content a day if I had time. So I can help you do all that. I can help you turn your ideas into information, your content into cash flow, what you already know into cash flow, your rants into revenue, your songs into salary, your message into money. All right, so go to Rob.team. Anyway, look, um, I just want to summarise, I think. Am I on for another five minutes? Is that right? Uh, yeah, five minutes. Quick. Yeah, I'm on for another five minutes. I hope you're enjoying the show. So, the new rules of money. Are you ready? Now, I have done content on this separately. And if you follow me, you can find it. And if you go on Rob.team, you can find a masterclass on this, by the way. So I'm just going to actually list it out rather than detail it. But the 10 new, new rules of money are, number one, cash is now trash. You've got to get rid of cash. Instead of spending six pounds on a large cost of coffee, there's a cost of coffee that's six pounds, 12 pence. I mean, you can get on Rob.team for less than that. So instead of having that six pound 12, put it into an asset, which is your mind. So cash is trash. Get your money out of cash. Number two, savings are getting wiped out by inflation. So you've got a number three, turn your savings into assets. Invest into assets. Number four, cash is no longer king because of inflation and low interest. What's king is cash flow. Would you rather have 100 grand in the bank or 10 grand a month recurring? I reckon you should take 10 grand a month recurring. Cash flow is king because cash is getting wiped out with inflation and low interest rates. What are we on? Number four, number five, number, whatever number. Let's call it number five. Money is in a revolution. It's in a correction and it's changing where it's going. If you think about where money was flowing in the last hundred years, it was flowing into steel. It was flowing into rail. It was flowing into air travel. It was flowing into telecommunications. It was flowing into industry and manufacturing. Now it's flowing out of there. And where's it flowing now? Cryptocurrencies online courses and information, social media, virtual reality, the metaverse. So money is moving where it was going. Sorry, I got out of shot there and where it is to going. So people who lose in times of money corrections are people who are like, well, the money was over here, but now it's gone. Oh, shit. 
Fuck! Oi, Boris! Oi, Joe! Help me! <coughs> Sorry, I choked. Choked talking about prime ministers and presidents. Instead of thinking, where's the new money going? Like, start your own currency. Start your own social media channel. Become a creator. Become a distributor online. of it. Become a distributor of information. Become a broadcaster. I'm a broadcaster. Broadcasters used to be BBC. HBO. Now they're RFM. Rob fucking Moore. You can be a distributor. Woo, I like the sound of that. Okay, what's the next rule of money then? You must have multiple streams of income. You must make money while you sleep. You must have digital assets. You must leverage the internet and information. And do you know that more millionaires are made in a recession than any other time in history? And there's a fucking great big whale of a recession coming. Mark my words, I don't know when, but I believe there's a big correction on the horizon. And it's going to be what it is. I can't change it and I can't influence it. But I'm going to see the opportunity. Asset prices coming down. Buy them cheap. An opportunity to start a business in a, a wiped out ground. All the competition gone. I can start with no competition. Lean, fast and agile. So really great opportunities right now. And on the, on the um, subject of opportunity, did you take your opportunity and join Rob.team? Did you? Because I know where you live. I will find you <laughs> and I will subscribe you. <laughs> but just type in rob.team in a new window. It's there, it costs you virtually nothing. There's no risk, no risk. Six quid, no, yeah, that's with the tax. I spend more than that on coffee today. There you go, because the more you learn, the more you earn. And when all is said and done, more is said than done. So go join rob.team, type in rob.team. T-E-A-M in any internet browser web page. You can cancel any time, no contract. And you can get hundreds of hours of information to start a business, scale a business, get better financial education and knowledge, be part of an amazing disruptive community, be part of this new financial money revolution, build multiple streams of recurring income, digital assets. It's all in Rob Dotting. Okay, quick summary then of everything. Bish bash bosh. If you don't make money while you sleep, you'll be working until you die. At the moment, we've got so much shit in the world. Brexit, COVID, lockdown, war, inflation, quantitative easing, fuel, food and energy shortages, no trust in the government, crashing markets, massive taxation. You cannot save your way out of this. You must invest your way out of this. You must earn your way out of this. You must beat inflation. There are four stages of income. There's zero income. Occurring stroke earned income, recurring income from assets, which is assets that produce ongoing income, but you're still working for them. And then passive income, which is like Slade, who are still earning from their Christmas number one from 1970. And that's totally passive. They're not doing anything to make that money. There's seven different types of income. There's the earned work income. There's the interest income, the profits income, the royalty income, the rental income, the dividend income and the capital income. Interest is on saving and lending. Profits is on buying and selling or owning a company and on capital. Royalties is assets other people use, rent, license or lease. So franchises, you get royalty income from a franchise. My friend owns the biggest martial arts franchise in the world. Then you've got rental income, which is what you rent out. But it's not just properties, it's cars, it's rooms. It's clothes, it's watches, it's yourself. Then dividend income, either the company you own, you get dividends from, or the company someone else owns, you own a piece of it, and you get dividends from. And I won't recap the 10 new rules of money because I just did. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. I have been Rob Moore. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And remember, if you don't join Rob.team, I will find you. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Oh, hit the share button. Help a brother out. It's, times are tough. Been down KFC licking people's fingers for food. Hit the share button. 